In the previous videos, we installed the software on our host machine and populated the microSD card with the images for the ZCU111 RFSOC RF Data Converter Evaluation Tool. This video will cover setting up the board and connecting it to the host machine. Again, we will start from the ZCU111 RF SOC RF Data Converter Evaluation Tool Getting Started Guide. We'll go to the section on board setup. The first instruction might trip you up a little. What's important to note is this statement about the default state of the jumpers and switches. I'm using a Rev 1.0 ZCU111 board, and the default state of the jumper should be OK to use with the eval tool. This section in the Getting Started Guide is out of date. I'm told it corresponds to Rev A of the board. And the Getting Started Guide just copied these tables right out of the UG 1271V 1.2, which is also out of date and corresponds to the Rev A of the board. So next, we will need to connect the XM500 Balan board to the ZCU111. But before I connect the XM500 to the ZCU111, I'm going to attach the SMA cables with the filters for the loopback connection between the analog to digital and digital to analog converter on the XM500. I'm going to use the VLFX2500 low pass filter on the digital to analog converter side. I'm going to connect EDC tile 1 block 0, which I've marked here with the yellow sticky, to the DAC tau 1 block 0, which I've marked with the other yellow sticky, um, and then ADC tau 1 block 1, which I've marked with the green sticky, to DAC tau 1 block 1 here with the other green sticky. Although it's not mentioned in the Getting Started Guide, it's worth referring to XTP518, the Software Install and Board Setup Tutorial. There's a section on Hardware Setup that tells you the best way to attach the XM500 and later remove it if you need to, to reduce the risk of damaging the FMC connectors. So now I'm going to remove the screws and washers from the ZCU111. And then I'm going to tighten the jack screw nuts with the hex wrench that came in the kit. They're already pretty tight, so I didn't have to do a whole lot. Then I'm going to attach the XM500, and I'll do an initial snug down of the screws. and then snag them down each by half a turn until all three are tight. The next step is to plug in the USB cable, the Ethernet cable, and the power. So we've got the USB here, the Ethernet here, and power here. Next, we need to set the boot mode to SD boot mode. Previously, we had it set to QSPY boot mode for the built-in self-test, uh, but now we want it in SD boot mode. So I'm going to set it to on, off, off, off. And then I will insert the micro SD card, which we prepared in the previous video. 
Next, I'll set up a putty session to get the serial terminal over the COM port. I've got device manager open and I've opened the port section. And then I'm just gonna check the properties to figure out which one is B. So this one is B on COM5. So we'll set putty to COM5, 1, 5, 200. Next, I'm gonna set up ethernet on my host machine to have a static IP address. So I'm gonna specify the IP address as 192.168.1.2, subnet mask as the default, and the default gateway as 192.168.1.1. Next, I'm going to check the RFDC evaluation UI.ini to see if the default in the eval tool matches the default in the release design files for the IP address. Unfortunately, the path is not given in the Getting Started Guide. The way I found it was by going to Windows C and then searching for that file name. So here we go. Now we found the path. It turns out it's in the directory where the UI is installed, if you remembered where you installed it. So if we look at the IP address here, no, it does not match the 192.168.1.3. So let's update the INI file. So now I'm gonna start up the board. And we can see the boot messages coming up on PuTTY. So let's start up the eval tool. We should see that the board takes some time to get detected by the eval tool. You can see the serial console and check when the ethernet has come up. Oh, here we go. This one I was about to give up. So even after the board is now detected, it will take some time for the rest of the UI to get initialized. Like when I click on board here, eventually something will show up in this section. I'm fast forwarding through the wait time in the video editing. So I'm not sure if it made a difference, but I just had gone to window and gone through the command log and now this appeared. So anyway, if we go to PL settings, what's cool in 2019.1 is that you can now dynamically change which design is loaded from the UI. So the default is the non MTS Bitstream, but we can click here and load the multi-tile sync design just to see it work.
and you can see that the FPGA manager is running in the serial console. So hopefully this series of videos help you to get a handle on all the various sources of information for the Xilinx ZTU111 board and the RF data converter eval tool, helped you to connect the dots, and helped you to get around some stumbling blocks to get the tool up and running. Thanks for watching.